Chapter 8 And God remembered Noah, and all the beasts, and all the cattle that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep, and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of a hundred and fifty days the waters decreased. And the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month on the first day of the month were the tops of the mountains seen. And it came to pass at the end of forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent forth a raven, and it went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. And he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him to the ark. For the waters were on the face of the whole earth, and he put forth his hand, and took her, and brought her in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet other seven days. And again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came in to him at eventide. And lo, in her mouth an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. And he stayed yet other seven days, and sent forth the dove. And she returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass in the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dried. And in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dry. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth from the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, both birds and cattle, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him, every beast, every creeping thing, and every bird, whatsoever moveth upon the earth, after their families went forth out of the ark. And Noah builded an altar unto Jehovah, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean bird, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And Jehovah smelled the sweet savor, and Jehovah said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for that the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living, as I have done. While the earth remaineth seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night, shall not cease. End of chapter 8. Chapter 9. And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth. And the fear of you, and the dread of you, shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every bird of the heavens, with all wherewith the ground teemeth, and all the fishes of the sea into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be food for you, as the green herb have I given you all. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely your blood, the blood of your lives, will I require, at the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man, even at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. In you be ye fruitful, and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. And God spake unto Noah, and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you, of all that go out of the ark, even every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of the flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, 
This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth from the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and of these was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be a husbandman, and planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine, and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment, and laid it upon both their shoulders, and went backward, and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine, and knew what his youngest son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be Jehovah, the God of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. God enlarge Japheth, and let him dwell in the tents of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood three hundred and fifty years, and all the days of Noah were nine hundred and fifty years, and he died. End of chapter 9. Chapter 10. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, namely of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshech, and Tiris, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Riphath, and Togarma, and the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Ketim, and Dodanim. Of these were the isles of the nations divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families in their nations. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Put, and Canaan, and the sons of Cush, Seba, and Havilah, and Sabta, and Rehma, and Sabtika, and the sons of Rehma, Sheba, and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before Jehovah. Wherefore it is said, Like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before Jehovah. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kalneh, and the land of Shinar, out of that land he went forth into Assyria, and builded Nineveh, and Rehoboth, Ir, and Kala, and Resim between Nineveh and Kala. The same is the great city. And Mizraim begat Ludim, and Anamim, and Lehapim, and Naphtuhim, and Pathrusim, and Kasluhim, whence went forth the Philistines, and Kaphtorim. And Canaan begat Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Girgashite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, and the Arvadite, and the Zemarite, and the Hamathite. And afterward were the families of the Canaanites spread abroad. And the border of the Canaanite was from Sidon, as thou goest toward Gerar unto Gaza, as thou goest toward Sodom and Gomorrah, and Adma and Zeboim unto Laisha. These are the sons of Ham after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, in their nations. And unto Shem, the father of all the children of Eber, the elder brother of Japheth, to him also were children born. The sons of Shem, Elam, and Asher, and Arpaxhad, and Lud, and Aram, and the sons of Aram, 
Uz, and Hul, and Gether, and Mash. And Arpachshad begat Shelah, and Shelah begat Eber. And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided. And his brother's name was Joktan. And Joktan begat Almodad, and Sheleth, and Hazarmaveth, and Jirah, and Hadoram, and Uzal, and Dikla, and Obel, and Abimael, and Sheba, and Ophir, and Havilah, and Jobab. All these were the sons of Joktan, and their dwelling was from Mesha, as thou goest toward Sephar, the mountain of the east. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, after their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations, and of these were the nations divided in the earth, after the flood. End of chapter 10 Chapter 11 And the whole earth was of one language, and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Come, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build us a city, and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And Jehovah came down to see the city, and the tower which the children of men builded. And Jehovah said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is what they begin to do. And now nothing will be withholden from them, which they purpose to do. Come, let us go down and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So Jehovah scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore was the name of it called Babel, because Jehovah did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did Jehovah scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old and begat Arpachshad two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begat Arpachshad five hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And Arpachshad lived five and thirty years, and begat Shelah. And Arpachshad lived after he begat Shelah four hundred and three years, and begat sons and daughters. And Shelah lived thirty years, and begat Eber. And Shelah lived after he begat Eber four hundred and three years, and begat sons and daughters. And Eber lived four and thirty years, and begat Peleg. And Eber lived after he begat Peleg four hundred and thirty years, and begat sons and daughters. And Peleg lived thirty years, and begat Ru. And Peleg lived after he begat Ru two hundred and nine years, and begat sons and daughters. And Ru lived two and thirty years, and begat Serug. And Ru lived after he begat Serug two hundred and seven years, and begat sons and daughters. And Serug lived thirty years, and begat Nahor. And Serug lived after he begat Nahor two hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And Nahor lived nine and twenty years, and begat Terah. And Nahor lived after he begat Terah a hundred and nineteen years, and begat sons and daughters. And Terah lived seventy years, and begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begat Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity, in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. And Sarai was barren. She had no child. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees, to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran, and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran. End of chapter 11. Chapter 12. Now Jehovah said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show thee. 
and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and be thou a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and him that curseth thee will I curse, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abram went as Jehovah had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the oak of Morah. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And Jehovah appeared unto Abram, and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto Jehovah, who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto the mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and Ai on the east. And there he builded an altar unto Jehovah, and called upon the name of Jehovah. And Abram journeyed going on still toward the south. And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was sore in the land. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold, now I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon, and it will come to pass, when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they will say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with thee for thy sake, and that my soul may live because of thee. And it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman, that she was very fair. And the princes of Pharaoh saw her, and praised her to Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And he dealt well with Abram for her sake. And he had sheep, and oxen, and he asses, and men servants, and maid servants, and she asses, and camels. And Jehovah plagued Pharaoh in his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why saidest thou, She is my sister, so that I took her to be my wife? Now therefore behold thy wife, Take her and go thy way. And Pharaoh gave men charge concerning him, and they brought him on the way, and his wife, and all that he had. End of chapter 12. Chapter 13. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him, into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of Jehovah. And Lot also, who went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together. For their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle, and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife. I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen, for we are brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or, if thou take the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes, and beheld all the plain of the Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before Jehovah destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of Jehovah, like the land of Egypt, as thou goest unto Zoar. So Lot chose him all the plain of the Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves, the one from the other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked, and sinners against Jehovah exceedingly. And Jehovah said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, 
northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed for ever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then may thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for unto thee will I give it. And Abram moved his tent, and came and dwelt by the oaks of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and built there an altar unto Jehovah. End of chapter 13. Chapter 14. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Arioch, king of Elasser, Chedorlamer, king of Elam, and Tiddle, king of Goim, that they made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinam, king of Adma, and Shem Eber, king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, the same is Zoar. All these joined together in the vale of Sidim, the same is the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served Chedorlamer, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. And in the fourteenth year came Chedorlamer and the kings that were with him, and smote the Rephaim in Ashtaroth Karnaim, and the Zuzim in Ham, and the Emim in Shaveh Kir E Athaim, and the Horites in their Mount Seir unto El Paran, which is by the wilderness. And they returned and came to Enmishpat, the same is Kadesh, and smote all the country of the Amalekites, and also the Amorites that dwelt in Hazazon Tamar. And there went out the king of Sodom, and the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Adma, and the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bedla, the same as Zoar. And they set the battle in array against them in the vale of Sidim, against Chedorlamer, king of Elam, and Tiddle, king of Goim, and Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Eric, king of Elasar, four kings against the five. Now, the vale of Sidim was full of slime pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, and they fell there, and they that remained fled to the mountain, and they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all their victuals, and went their way. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and departed. And there came one that had escaped, and told Abram the Hebrew. Now he dwelt by the oaks of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eskel, and brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abram. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he led forth his trained men, born in his house, three hundred and eighteen, and pursued as far as Dan. And he divided himself against them by night, he and his servants, and smote them, and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought back his brother Lot, and his goods, and the women also, and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chedorlamer, and the kings that were with him at the vale of Sheva, the same as the king's vale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was priest of God Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him a tenth of all. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto Jehovah, God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take a thread, nor a shoe latchet, nor aught that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. Save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men that went with me, Aner, Eskel, and Mamre, let them take their portion. End of chapter 14. Chapter 15. After these things the word of Jehovah came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield, and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, O Lord Jehovah, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And he that shall be possessor of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of Jehovah came unto him, saying, 
this man shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and number the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in Jehovah, and he reckoned it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am Jehovah that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees, to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, O Lord Jehovah, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me a heifer three years old, and a she-goat three years old, and a ram three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each half over against the other. But the birds divided he not. And the birds of prey came down upon the carcasses, and Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be sojourners in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. But thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, thou shalt be buried in a good old age, and in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down, and it was dark, behold a smoking furnace, and a flaming torch, that passed between these pieces. In that day Jehovah made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenite, and the Kenazite, and the Cadmonite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Rephaim, and the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Girgashite, and the Jebusite. End of chapter 15